Hi, this is Dan Malloy, continuing with GMAT Math Quant. If x equals 2 to the b minus 8 to the 8th plus 8 to the 6th, for which of the following b values is x closest to 0? Okay, so for which of the following b values, so these are potential values of b, is x closest to 0? So if x were 0, then you could add this term over. So what we're really trying to find out is when is 2 to the b closest to 8 to the 8th plus 8 to the 6th. Because when they're close in value, then 2 to the b minus that thing, if it's close in value, will be close to 0. So we want to find the value of b that makes those closest to being equal. So 8 to the 8th and 8 to the 6th are too large to compute. Um, even with a calculator, they're probably too large. So we're going to have to um, use some exponential equivalent to think about this. So let's recall that 8 is 2 cubed. So if we substitute 2 cubed for 8, then we can take the right side and say 2 cubed to the 8th plus 2 cubed to the 6th. Uh, and I'm just going to work on the right side here and get this into some simpler form. So this is 2 to the 24th, 2 to the 24th, plus 2 to the 18th. So 2 to the 18th is significantly smaller than 2 to the 24th. So 2 to the 18th is not a huge contribution to the overall magnitude of 2 to the 24th. So I'm thinking that 24 might be a good choice. Or if 2 to the 18th is a significant contribution, then it does increase the size of 2 to the 24th and might bring it close to 2 to the 25th. So we may want to keep that in play. But I think we can eliminate these other choices because they're too far away. So it's really between 24 and 25. And then in order to examine that, why don't we factor out 2 to the 18th? Because 2 is a common factor for both of these terms. So if we factor out 2 to the 18th from both sides, we'll end up with 2 to the 6th from this guy plus 1 from this guy plus 1. So now if you think about it, what is 2 to the 6th? That's not too big to compute. We can actually figure out what that is. Um, that is 64, right? 2 times 2 times 2, 6 times. Or you could do 2 to the 2 cubed, which is 8, squared, uh, would be 64. So if this equals 64, and this equals 1, then I guess my question is how much bigger is this whole quantity with the 1 than it would be without? If it didn't have the 1, then it would just be 2 to the 18th times 2 to the 6th, which is 2 to the 24th. With the 1, instead of this term being worth 64, 2 to the 6th, it's worth 65. So how much bigger is this thing than 2 to the 24th? It's like an extra 1 out of 64. That's how much bigger. So that's somewhere between 1 and 2 percent, right? So this thing is 1 or 2 percent bigger than 2 to the 24th. So 2 to the 24th is pretty close to it. So that's looking like an even better choice. What about 2 to the 25th? If we were to consider that as a possibility. How much bigger is 2 to the 25th then 2 to the 24th. Well, it's 2 to the 24th times 2 to the 1. So 2 to the 25th is twice as big as 2 to the 24th. So this thing is 1 to 2 percent bigger than 2 to the 24th. And this thing, 2 to the 25th, is twice as big as that, or 100 percent more. It's a hundred percent more than two to the twenty-fourth. 
So it seems to me like this is a lot closer. And we're going to want to choose B.